Now listen here, youngins. I don't want to sound like an old man, but these music shows you kids are into nowadays just go too darn late. Now, I am no old fussy, but I've got to wake up for church in the morning, and you expect me to stay out past midnight? Well, sorry, Jimmy. I'm just going to have to see your band, uh, what was it, Flesh Excrement? A different time. Tales, Minions, and Mortals, this is Fang from Lords of the Trident. I would venture to say that a very large number of us musicians enjoy going out to see live music. Listening to a CD or a DVD or a live stream of a concert can't really replace the absolute sonic assault that is being at a club and seeing one of your favorite bands in the flesh. And of course, before the digital era and maybe since the dawn of time, one of humanity's favorite ways to have fun has been to go out to a bar, have a few drinks, and maybe see some amazing live music. I mean. What else were we going to do for fun? Stay at home and read a book? Play Yahtzee? Start a cult? Since bars and clubs had somewhat of a monopoly on what I'll call active nighttime entertainment. Does that sound dirty? Yeah. And since they wanted to sell as much alcohol as possible, it makes sense that they would want entertainment happening all the way until they were legally required to close. This is also known as bar time, and it differs from state to state. Here in Wisconsin, our bar time is 2 a.m. Now, I may be showing my age a bit here, but I can't think of a time when I've actively wanted to stay out drinking until the wee hours of the morning. I've got unlimited hours and types of free entertainment sitting at home, or heck, even sitting in my pocket. And I could start and stop this entertainment on any schedule that works for my biological clock. Go back 30 plus years, and that was absolutely not an option. If you wanted to have fun, you were going out, and you were probably going to stay out late. All of us who live on the internet poke fun at the technologically challenged. The grandmas and grandpas still using their AOL email account and typing searches as their Facebook posts. I mean, how could someone be so uninformed and blind to the massive shifts taking place over the last few decades? It feels like they've closed their eyes and plugged their ears and said, I refuse to believe that anything's changed. Now, was I just talking about your grandma or your favorite music venue? down the street. A large majority of venues are still behaving like it's the 80s and that people actively want to stay out drinking until 2 a.m. And it is absolutely hurting the growth of good local bands. We've all seen shows awkwardly crammed full of five or six bands over the course of a night. Heck, I've even seen a bunch of C-grade headliner acts fill their touring stops with like five openers. You know who you are. Why are they doing this? because the bar believes it needs to be active until bar time. They're still stuck in this idea that they need to have live entertainment until nearly two in the freaking morning. On the surface, this makes sense. The more people at the bar to see the show, the more drinks you sell. The longer the people stay, the more they'll want to drink. So if someone stays all night, you might sell five to 10 drinks to a single person. In a bar owner's mind, a longer show or perhaps more bands to pad out the night equals more money right? Not necessarily. Be honest. How many times has this happened to you? Hey dude, I'm playing the Angry Badger tonight with flesh excrement. You should totally come out. Oh, sweet. All right, let me check the event here. Six bands. Oh, starts at eight. Oh. Uh, yo dude, I'd love to come out and see you tonight. Uh, where are you guys in the order of bands performing? Uh, uh, we're, we're going on a bit later in the night. Yeah, but like, what time exactly? Uh, um, probably like 12.30. Let's be honest, dude, we're totally going on at 1.30 a.m. Gotcha. Uh, I will do my best to make it. I'm totally not going. This right here is exactly why most bands will tell you that headlining a show sucks. Yeah, to the average concertgoer, it might seem like a big deal to have your name on the marquee. But to an experienced band, the main thing this means is you are going to play last. And that, more than anything else, can be a real crowd killer. You really have to factor in crowd fatigue for these shows. Do I want to slog through three or five opening bands just to see the band I'm mildly interested in? And let's be honest, a majority of these opening bands will probably not be very good. Or do I plan on venturing out of the house at like midnight? That's perilous too, not just because of the potential drunk drivers, but because that comfy bed might be calling my name around 11.30 p.m. and I might not be able to resist its siren song. When you see people make posts online that it's rude to ask a band when they're playing, or you should come out and support all the bands, man, 
yeah, part of that is true because you might end up seeing a really great new band that you've never heard of before. But I would venture to say that at least 30% of the impetus behind those posts is using guilt to get people to come out and stay late for your band. Anyone with experience out there knows for a fact that if you put anything later than 11 p.m. on your event info, you're instantly gonna lose a big chunk of your audience. And if you're tracking your attendance data, which you absolutely should be doing, you can easily see this effect. This actually came up for us recently here in Madison. On average, we'll pull out between 100 and 200 people per local show here, and we know the demographics of our audience. These are not people that routinely stay out late, and the later we play, the less audience we have. A newer bar put together a show with us headlining at 12.30 a.m., and I told them, if you put us on that late, you can cut your expected attendance in half. Sure enough, even with four other bands on the bill, we only had 68 people in attendance on a Saturday night. And here's where the clash between the bar owner's reality and actual reality happens. At the end of the day, the bar owners are only interested in the money. So let's break this down monetarily. Let's assume that every one of those 68 people arrived at 9 p.m. and drank one drink per hour. That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 times 68, which equals 340 drinks. Now, of course, some people will drink more, some people will leave early, some people won't drink at all. Setting aside all that, just for the sake of simplicity, we're left with 340 drinks. Let's say on average, uh, I don't know, five bucks a drink, that's $1,700. Compare that with starting and ending earlier. Instead of five bands, let's do three really good bands and Lords will go on around 11 p.m. In this scenario, it's not outlandish to expect 150 to 200 people to show up, but let's just double the actual attendance. So 136 people at one drink per hour. That's nine, 10, 11, that's three hours, times 136 people gives you 408 drinks. That's $2,040. In effect, the bar owner is losing $340 because they think they need music all night. They're also spending more money in staffing, electricity, security, and dealing with more belligerent drunks as the night goes on. Lars of the Try Hard is my favorite band of all time and I will punch anyone in the face who says any different, I swear to you. The most important thing for a bar is drink sales. And the most important thing for a band is eyeballs, attendance. At the end of the day, the thing that grows your band is people knowing you exist. Stuffing a night full of bands until the wee hours of the morning is not only hurting the bar, it's hurting the bands too. In the short term, yeah, you care about the money that the bar is giving you for performing, but in the long term, you're on a hunt for super fans. You're trying to find the people who will do things like Join your Patreon, buy all of your new shirts, share your music online, and get a tattoo of your face on their chest. Most people who do those things will be financially stable and, tattoo aside, generally responsible. They're not the 2 a.m. drunks. Real life example, we would routinely play the Boss Meadery Mead and Metal Festival here in Madison, which, up until recently, would start at like 2 in the afternoon and go till 7 p.m. It was a day drinking event. We have made more diehard super fans from that one event than almost any other thing I can think of. And these were people who had no idea we existed when they arrived. And yeah, I know you're watching this video and yes, I am talking about you. So am I saying we start all of our metal shows at 2 p.m.? No, absolutely not. But what I'm pleading to bars is that they take into account the large majority of people who A, want to support local music, B, want to have a few drinks, and C, have a nine to five job that leaves them with a biological clock hardwired to shut down the body around midnight. Iron Maiden doesn't take the stage at 1 a.m. Metallica doesn't start their concerts at midnight. If bars want the same type of large attendance that you would see at bigger shows, they should take a hint and plan out their shows more mindfully. And bands, you have a say in this too. You can be an agent of change for your city. Explain to the bar owners or promoters why a five band bill is not a good investment of anyone's time. T take a pass on shows where you know you'll be playing after midnight. Try starting earlier instead of ending later. And above all else, keep your shows on time. Everyone in this city knows that when I say a band is playing at 8 p.m., they are playing at 8 p.m., not 8.30, not 8.15, 8 p.m. People have invested their time to come out and see a show 
and you have to respect that. And bar owners, don't worry, you'll still have problematic alcoholics that will camp at your bar until closing time. Live music or not, it's win-win! Okay, bands, in the comments below, I want you to share your stories of the most insanely dumb bills you've ever been a part of. I want to know how long you played, when you went on, and what happened to the last band of the night. Please, share your stories below. It's going to be a, a laugh for everybody. As always, thank you for watching, and if you want to help the band buy a case of five-hour energy drink for the next time a bar decides to put us on at 1 a.m., join our metal army today at www.patreon.com slash Lords of the Trident. Jimmy, is that a web? I don't... Okay, anyway, well, we'll see you next time. <coughs> oh, my hip.